Captains of Industry, brought to you by Airtel. Hello and the warmest welcome to this edition of Captains of Industry. Now in the good times, the South African construction industry created about 1 million jobs. The cities were getting a facelift and industry was expanding. And then came the bust of 2008. And from then on, construction started to see a few bricks falling off. As the sector struggles to find its feet, it has direct bearing on the cement producers. Today, it seems as though innovation is key and even cement makers have to think outside the box. Thinking outside the box is the newly appointed CEO of Lafarge Mining and he joins us as our captain of industry tonight, Funani Mojono. Thanks so much for your time, uh, Funani. New to the job, circumstances really challenging, mm -hmm. the sector sluggish, economy sluggish, and you've got to make sense of all of that. What does sense mean to you? Well, um, sense means um, and keeping focused um, to the little that we, we remain with today, mm. um, making sure that uh, we creatively do things differently mm -hmm. um, to sustain the few jobs that we have and um, mm -hmm. the little profitability that we, we have today, and, and, and continue to dig deep um, for the, the, the small jobs that um, remain available. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we know that there's no big ones, um, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that there's, there's, there's nothing happening in the industry. And then look ahead for the future because the economy is going to turn. Right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of uh, construction firms, for instance, were relying heavily on government tenders, particularly with the 800 billion rands that was earmarked for infrastructure. But as government started to review governance issues, a lot of those programs were stalled. And yeah. then you started to see construction companies having to dig deep because they couldn't rely on pipelines, for instance. Yeah. You get affected because you feed into that system. Well, we now, supply the raw, the raw material, yeah. Now, the issue is, why must government be the driver of some of these projects? It's that innovation that's needed. The, look, I think a lot of the, the infrastructure that sustains um, any country has um, uh, developed by the government. Um, the private sector does to a certain extent, but the confidence for the private sector to start developing those um, has to be stimulated by, by government. Mm. Um, having said that, though, um, I, as I said in my introduction, there are bits and pieces uh, of in infrastructural uh, projects that are taking place, right. still from, um, uh, uh, stimulated by government. Um, as an example, if you drive just outside Gauteng and you drive in the countries, you find shocking road infrastructure, mm -hmm. and those need to be uh, redeveloped because those are the network that are going to be crucial for, right. for, for the economy to, um, to, to grow. The, 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 the government, um, uh, unfortunately, um, as it refocuses itself in, in terms of what priorities it has to drive, um, we as an industry have to chip in and partner right. with them uh, going forward. What does innovation mean to somebody like you? Innovation means doing things differently. Mm -hmm. coming up with different solutions. Um, for, for Lafarge Mining specifically, uh, we, we have infrastructure that we developed um, or built um, to sustain a certain demand, um, which picked up in 2008. Um, that infrastructure is with us today. We can't wish it away. So we need to find a smart way of using it, mm. um, and, and specifically ensuring that um, the little resources that we have are used effectively. Right. Um, but also it, it, it means developing new products um, that will assist our customers. Um, in doing the same and containing their own cost and sustaining their jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and lastly, um, would be finding ways to relate uh, mm -hmm. in the industry um, between the private sector and the government right. and driving activity going Help forward. me understand Lafarge, because when I think Lafarge, I think one of the biggest cement makers the world over. Yeah. But it's operating on different planes, like Lafarge Mining. What do you do there? How does it support the core business that Lafarge represents? Okay, le let me start by confirming that um, Lafarge is a world leader um, in uh, construction material supply. Um, it 
predominantly supplies cement um, as our biggest part of the business. Mm -hmm. um, but cement goes into construction um, and, and the biggest part of, our, of construction is uh, concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, in concrete you need stone. Mm -hmm. So the mixture of oh, cement yeah. and stone and water and sand uh, result in concrete. So this, this is how the business is structured globally. We have cement, we have concrete ready mix, we have aggregate and aggregate or mining is actually operations where we we blast um, specific rock, we crush it into different sizes, and that gets mixed with cement or it gets mixed with um, okay, uh, so bitumen. Like a simple mind, is uh, you, you, you do quarry. We do quarry, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Open cast mining for those uh, who don't know what quarrying is. Okay. So in South Africa, even though we have the three product lines we split into two companies. Um, one is Lafarge Mining yeah. and one is Lafarge Industries. And Lafarge Industries is where the traditional manufacturing happens, which mm -hmm. is cement and, and concrete, and then mining uh, would be where we produce our aggregate. How's the industry changing in the midst of these volatile conditions? In South Africa, you have about 23% market share, but what we're starting to see is the Chinese coming into the space, mm -hmm. partnering with indigenous players like Dangote, mm -hmm. Uh, moving into new markets and you've got to be competitive and relevant in those conditions. Absolutely. Look, the, that picture is more uh, complicated or more challenging for our cement um, colleagues uh, but without a doubt um, they are, they, it, it, as I indicated that innovation in Lafarge is this cornerstone of, of the business is actually our, our strategic imperative. Um, our cement operations have to reinvent themselves, have to be more cost effective, have to build stronger and new relationships to mm -hmm. combat competition. It's not going to be easy. Um, mm -hmm. Competition also brings in opportunities as well, we must remember that. Um, but with regards to the, the, the aggregate business mining, you, you rely on what we call um, the, uh, the, the the, the positioning advantage, um, where your quarry is um, uh, in line with your customers gives you um, the advantage because right. it doesn't travel that far. It's not a high value commodity, uh, yeah. so margins are very tight. So you need to be very close to your customers and customer service in all spheres of our business, right. including cement, uh, will be crucial. Even though there's a certain peculiarity to mining, yeah. um, you do get caught up in the hype. And I know that in the last year or so, we focused on the cement makers globally yeah. as operating like a cartel. Mm -hmm. Pricing issues have come to the fore. Governance issues and the issuance of tenders have come to the fore. How are you influenced? Because apparently cement in South Africa mm. alone is 65% more than what you'd be paying on a global standard. So there is a sense that just because you guys are big players, yeah. you dominate the market and you manipulate the market. Um, look, I'm, I'm not sure if there's, there's truth in that. I think it, it generally in business, business is driven by supply and demand. Uh, and when, when there's demand, um, prices go up. And I would think that uh, our cement um, uh, operations operate in, in the same manner. Mm -hmm. um, coming back home, uh, we have markets in, in, in the aggregate side where we, we have favorable prices, we have areas where we make absolutely no money. Uh, in some cases, you even wonder you should keep the operations uh, going. But it's all about supply and demand. Yeah. When you go to work, mm -hmm. what does that mean? You say to me, acquiring business, I yeah. think overalls, I think a helmet. Well, I actually <laughs> wanted to come here with an overall and a helmet <laughs> and, and a yellow vest. Um, look, for me, it involves both. Um, the, the, there's a network of stakeholders uh, for me um, at my level. Um, I've got um, the Lafarge um, family, uh, which are the employees, um, that need to see me in, in, in a different light, need to see me as a leader leading by example. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if I go into a quarry, uh, I have to look the part. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously when I meet um, beautiful people like you, no, I, also you, have, you. I also <laughs> have to look the part. So uh, I juggle um, um, between those. Uh, but 
specifically what it means is um, starting at our office in Long Meadow with lots of meetings, yeah. flying around the country, meeting my teams, meeting customers, and meeting communities within the areas we operate. Your leadership style, people say you thrive on mentorship. Yeah. Tell me more. Well, I actually thrive on seeing happy faces. Um, so, um, if I believe because I spend a lot of time at work, I have to be happy. But the environment for me to be happy um, has to be there. So, um, as a leader, I need to dig deep, find the little things that make me happy, and create an environment for the people that work for me to be, mm -hmm. to be um, as happy as I am. Um, obviously, people don't get to that state that, um, at the same time. There's those that you need to hold their hands. There's those that have fears mm. in terms of their future. There's those that don't know where they're going tomorrow, where their growth lies. And that's where I play a role in terms of mentoring and coaching. Um, I literally spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, time with everybody at different levels. How do you identify fears in people? Well, firstly, um, in, in an organization as big as ours, um, the first thing that starts would be um, lots of complaints. Um, you know, if you sit in a meeting, the first thing that comes out is negativity. And you know that there's um, specific problems. Um, you also see it in productivity, because productivity and morale are linked. So um, as soon as you see sluggishness and people not committing, you know there's some uh, uh, there's, there's there's a problem mm -hmm. somewhere, um, and and, uh, and and those are the subtle things that you look you you look at. But the most important thing would be to be on the ground with the people, engage with them. Mm -hmm. We have a, a concept in Lafarge called visible felt leadership where when I walk in the, in, in the production line, I have to stop and talk to somebody, mm -hmm. try and know them um, uh, very well, and by doing that, I'll understand what bugs them. Yeah. And you can actually extrapolate that throughout the, the, the operation. So once you've problem. sifted through the complaints and you've empathized with the lack of morale, how mm -hmm. do you inspire them? Well, firstly, is to provide hope. Um, the, 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 the first part of providing hope is uh, to understand exactly what the, the real issue is. If it's something that is within your control, you, you then fix it. If something that you can't control, I have a philosophy that worry about those you can control. If I can't control it, certainly they can control mm -hmm. it. So uh, together with them, we, I'm going to find a way to check it out. Yeah. Okay, bring in something that will replace it. Um, but I think th the most important thing is to communicate um, continuously. Um, th what drives fear in most cases is the lack of knowledge. Mm. Is people seeing change and they don't understand where it's going. And sometimes we assume that people living on the floor don't understand financial statements, but maybe they don't. Yeah. But they can see when trucks are not going out of the yard and they know that money is not coming in. Yeah. So they wonder, will I have a job tomorrow? So those are the, 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 the subtle things that you, you look at. That kind of sensitivity, I'd like yeah. us to continue on. Funani will do so after the break. He's a qualified engineer, pseudo-psychologist, as you can tell, <laughs> and he's going to be telling us more about how he runs Lafarge Mining after the break.